Welcome back to Tip Tuesday. My name is Matthew Sturkey with Stone Mill Log and Timber Homes. Thanks for joining us this week. Last week we spoke about maintenance friendly building products. This week we're going to switch gears a little bit and talk about the things that are needed by your general contractor to help get the project started off on the right foot. Um, what I mean by that in essence is we're partnering with your general contractor or if you're serving as an owner builder, we're partnering with you and your subs uh, to make sure that the project gets started off on the right foot. So what uh, items or what tools, what things would you need to help that project get started off uh, correctly? The first is gonna be a survey. That will be helpful to show property lines, to know where your property boundaries are, especially if you're building on a smaller tract of land and you're building a larger footprint, knowing where the property lines are, having visible um, uh, boundaries shown so that you know that you're not encroaching on any type of property line or any setback. The second thing will be the covenants and restrictions of the development that you're building in. If you're not building in a development, this is not an item that you'll need, but if you are, you'll have certain setback restrictions that are required within that development. So it's, impart, it's important to know what those setback requirements are. It's important to have a survey so that you know where your property boundaries are, and then you can lay everything out. The general contractor can lay everything out, can stake the property out, or you and your subs can stake the property out to know exactly how it's gonna lay on the land and make sure that you're not in violation of any uh, type of setback restriction or any type of encroachment on a property line. So a survey, covenants restrictions, the third item that they would need is a very detailed set of prints. Uh, it could be an estimating set, it could be a full four construction set of drawings, but make sure that the drawings are designed and developed specifically for your building project, for your site, for the finishes that you want, uh, for all your wants and needs. Make sure it's specific to what you want to have shown on the exterior for the siding or uh, the foundation finish on the interior for the interior wall finishes. So make sure it's a specific set of plans that the, that's developed specifically for your site. And then the fourth is a list or a collage of all the needs and wants that you have, all of your desires and wishes and, and hopes for what you wanna put into that property. The hardware that you wanna use, the cabinetry, the flooring material, the wall finishes on the interior, all of those things that you would like to see in your home, make sure that is either conveyed um, in a photo album or in a Pinterest board or in some type of format where you can clearly convey that to your general contractor so that he knows, uh, he or she knows exactly what they're supposed to estimate. And then that way your estimate, your good faith estimate is accurate. It is um, developed from a very uh, thorough set of plans. And then you know specifically what uh, property boundaries are and where uh, lot lines lay and uh, what setbacks you need. So those are just some key ingredients on helping the project get started off on the right foot. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful today. If you have any questions about this topic, uh, about these tips or any other tips that we have from Tip Tuesday, please contact us anytime. Uh, we're happy to help in any way that we can. Uh, thanks for joining us this week for Tip Tuesday. Look forward to seeing you next week. Until then, stay warm, stay safe, and stay, stay healthy. Take care. Mm -hmm.